Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that was always a little bit more Lucian K. Truscott than John P. Lucas. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and take a look at Opie Arena from WizKids. In OP Arena from WizKids, two to six players will attempt to engage a host of kooky characters in a battle royale in the center of the multiverse. Essentially, this represents uh, various games that people all compete from across various fields of reality uh, in the hopes of emerging as the greatest fighter of all time. Now, players each start the game with three cards. They play two of them, they keep one in their hand. Now, these cards can represent various creatures uh, from anything you can think of. There are various monsters or, or kooky characters or things from fantasy or science fiction. And they fall into different classes like humans, animals, mechs, mythical, uh, undead, etc., etc. And so what you're going to do is play two of them out in front of you. Now you have one six-sided die. Now essentially on your turn, you're going to have some options. You can go ahead and you can discard one of those cards to put another card out. Uh, you can go ahead and you can have tokens which can essentially protect the abilities on your card. Or you can place a nerf token on somebody else's ability, which essentially will block an ability on one of their cards. So you can either protect your own with a token or kind of attack somebody else with a token, just doing that at the beginning of your turn. Next, you're going to roll a die. Now, once you roll that die, you can essentially decide which character you're going to use and which ability of theirs you're going to use. Most characters will just have a basic attack, um, which allows you to inflict so much damage. And you can choose which other character you're going to inflict that on. Or you can go ahead and sometimes they'll have a, a, a kind of a special thing which will allow you to grab more tokens. Or sometimes they'll other be, be other abilities. Sometimes they're persistent abilities that just help you. But other times if you roll a, a die and you can select that ability and it will let you do other fun and interesting things. Perhaps you can go through the deck, find another card there. Or you can find some other attack that will attack specific kinds of classes of characters on the board, etc., etc. Some of the items will let you kill uh, another character and you don't get any benefit for that other than the characters off the board and then other attacks will just allow you to do damage to other characters sometimes multiple characters now every character on the board has seven health so every time you attack it you put your damage markers on that so if you inflict damage on another character for three you would put three of your damage markers on there as soon as collectively he has seven damage on there from whomever that character is removed from place put in the discard pile and then you get however many points uh, equal to the damage markers you had on that card so if you just inflicted three damage and other people had inflicted the remaining four then you would get three points now, some cards also have other things. They kind of have a reactive ability. So if somebody else rolls a die, if they roll a specific number, then that can trigger something on your card, another kind of an attack or a special ability that you would get. And then you can draw back up to three cards. Now, at the beginning of your turn, at the beginning of everybody's turn, rather, there's going to be a call for dudes, so you can always have two cards out there whenever any round begins. So you just kind of keep going through these cards and playing and trying to attack each other as you're gaining and accruing and accruing more points. The first, in the standard game, the first player to get to 30 points wins the game, but you can also play a longer game where you go to 50. So whoever gets the target number of points wins OP Arena! So this is a very, very simple game. Um, sometimes it's one of those games I think maybe the rule book is a little bit more complicated than it needs to be because it's a very simple game. I got to tell you, I unboxed this game. I looked at the components. I thought the artwork, artwork was really cool, but generally I, I, it didn't really look like it thrilled me. It kind of the, the theme actually really reminds me of Duel of Ages 2, if you've ever played that, where you've got the same thing in the far future. You've got all these, these creatures from fantasy and science fiction and lore and history kind of come together and you can fight... It seemed very similar in that respect. I mean, I like that game, so it was kind of intriguing. But uh, just the game itself, it, it looked pretty sparse, and I was just like, eh, I went into it just kind of shrugging. I read the rule book, and again, it's another kind of a jokey rule book. It's got a lot of jokes in it, and I'm like, ah, you know, eh, not a big fan of jokey rule books. And then you look at the cards, and like the cards are super campy, they're super jokey. Like there's like the, the constipated frost giant, I think, is one, or the lactose intolerant unicorn is another one, um, the, 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 the pretentious vampire. You've got all these kind of jokey names. And again, I see this initially, I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. But what happens is we sit down and we play the game. And it's one of those games that was kind of insidious. It was like, oh my gosh, this is actually pretty fun. Because 
there's choices. You roll the die, and which ability are you going to use? And so you're trying to, to, to figure that out. And then the choice is, well, who do I attack? I've got you know the different players I'm playing against, and they've all got two cards out. Well, which one do I attack? Now, you can't say, well, what's his ability? And he has to tell you the ability. You can say, what's the name of the ability? But you cannot actually have people tell you specifically what the, their, their abilities are. So there's kind of a crapshoot, especially when you're putting out those tokens to block certain abilities if you're not quite sure what they are. Um, but that's another thing. You're trying to, to get as many of those um, tokens as you can to protect yourself and to inflict damage on, 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 on your opponents. But do you do that at the expense of, of these other cool abilities which, which you're getting that can inflict damage or, or help you in other ways? So that was really cool. Um, and then i got to be honest, uh, the, the sheer absurdity of the cards... I actually ended up finding quite charming. I, 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 we, my friends and I laughed several times at this game, um, even though, like I said, I was not really expecting to like that or appreciate that. I did. I found them quite, quite funny and quite amusing. The game is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun, a lot more fun than I was expecting. Now, the only complaint that I have is I wish they had included for every player, just a little sequence of play card that you could see. Just say, okay, got to do this, this, this. Because sometimes, really, it's in the book. It's not even on the back of the rule book. It's just, you know, in the book, you got to go through and find it, and it's big, and it's just kind of, okay, do this, do this, do this. And until you get into it, 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 it's just nice to have that little reminder there. And it'd be nice if you had little cards printed that reminded you of that. Um, but, but this is a really fun game. It's just a real simple game in the way it plays. It's super easy. Um, I think if you played with a full six, it would probably get too crowded. I, I, I don't know how fun that would be if you played with five or six. Uh, and I don't think it would be a particularly fun player with two, a uh, game with two players. I really think this game shines with three or four when you've got kind of a, an action where you, you're, you're constantly attacking each other. Uh, to me, I think that's where this game's going to shine. But really liked it. Really liked it a lot more than I thought I was going to. The recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for OP Arena is buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on TheDiscriminatingGamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer, and i got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, speaking of six core commanders, how about that Ernest J. Dolly, right? Am I right? <laughs> you should really read more history. Please somebody help me on my feet again, and I don't know where I'm going. Global thermal nuclear war!